All right, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy Lunar, and uh, <laughs> I just found this while I was streaming. Oh man, this video. What's going on? This video is called D1. Oh, let me fix my video. There we go. D1 on um, being offered record deal to perform homosexual acts by gatekeepers. Bro, y'all rappers better be safe out here, bro. By the art of Do you feel like it's gatekeepers in hip hop? Gatekeepers in the music industry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, depending on what part of the industry you're trying to get access to, there's gatekeepers. So if you're trying to get signed to a major label, there's gatekeepers. If you're trying to get on certain media platforms to get interviewed, there's gatekeepers. If you're trying to get on the mainstream radio, you heard me, urban radio, there's gatekeepers. Yes. 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 Um, I will say one last thing about gatekeepers. Uh, the only true gatekeeper to what's meant for you in this world is God and your level of integrity. That's the only two gatekeepers because what's meant for you and what you want, that's two different things. And a lot of times people end up wanting things that ain't of God. And now if you want something that ain't of God, you got to go through gatekeepers. So I'd rather go through God than go through gatekeepers any day. So all these people, all the times that I have encountered these gatekeepers in the industry and I'm knowing I'm overqualified for something, but I got somebody telling me I'm not good enough or I'm not enough for this or I'm not paying enough for that, da, da, da. I had to learn through maturity that that wasn't of God. You feel me? And he's saying some real shit right now. I don't think y'all are paying attention for real. That's what you got to check. Do you have godly ambition or do you have selfish ambition? And in this world, it's very easy to have selfish ambition. And that'll take you on a pathway to where you're going through all these gatekeepers who really ain't nobody in, in the big scheme of things on the totem pole of people with integrity and people with morals, values, and principles. These gatekeepers ain't nobody. But in this perverted, sick, twisted industry, these gatekeepers do hold access to certain levels, you know? Bro, I've had... <laughs> I've had gatekeepers in the music industry who have literally tried to hold a record deal behind their back and let me know like look if you if you're part of this homosexual act that i'm trying to take part in you hear me yeah come on this door open real quick for you like i i, I got a song where i've talked about that before called the devil's playground like this is real dog and the only way that that type of stuff can work on you is if you let them have all the leverage to where you want What's behind that gate that bad? So that's that's a real thing. Um, you also got people who, this is a different type of gatekeeper. The gatekeepers who will say, hey, you making too much righteous noise right now. If you just tone that righteousness down a little bit, then we'll allow you into these doors. But you got to tone that down. You got to become a little more vanilla, you heard me? A little more lukewarm, a little more bland, and you'll fit in with us more. So that's the slick gatekeeping. It ain't telling you, yeah, it ain't telling you to all the way, you know, bend over or, or open your mouth or something like that. It ain't that, but it's telling you like, dim your light. And what ends up happening is you got so many people that's like, well, that's not that bad. They not asking me to do nothing super crazy. I just got to dim my light. That's the scariest kind right there. Cause a lot of people will be like, wait, I just got to turn it from level 10 to level five, man, bet, I could do that, bro. I bet, now I get accepted, cool. Next thing you know, you got a whole industry, brother, that's lukewarm, whole industry lukewarm. So then when somebody that's on fire come along, they looking at it like, whoa, you crazy, hold on, you you shining too bright, hold on, hold on. Chill out, man, you doing you doing the most, you, you messing up. Man, stop, man. Crazy, man, so I want a bad track, right? Cause I mean, <laughs> Yeah, we definitely got a backtrack, man. So you saying that somebody came up to you personally trying to get you involved into, you know, some homosexual activity. Me personally, I definitely dealt with that, brother. Like I said, I didn't rapped about it and everything. So um, I didn't want the deal that bad. <laughs> yeah. So how did they react when you turned it down? Was they acting funny or? Yeah. Well, you got that moment of truth. When you realize what's happening, you got that moment of truth where you're like, oh, shoot. 
okay, what am I going to do? And that's not the first time in my life where I've had a moment of truth where I knew, like, my action right now can uh, change the course of my entire life, you know? So I knew, what time of, I knew what time of day it was, and, you know, I wasn't getting down with it. So when I was like, nah, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good, you know? This was, at a, this was at a music video shoot. So when I, when I was like, nah, I'm cool, you know, for the rest of the day, it was like, oh, no more attention from this person. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, this person ain't really willing to meet with you or, or, or talk to you or even like further the idea of talking about working with you. So once you see that you're getting that cold shoulder, or once I seen that I was getting that cold shoulder, I was like, well, I won't be getting signed today. You hear me? And you got to keep it moving. But man, it feel good, man. It feel good to be able to, to be able to speak about that and be able to speak like, to say like, oh, I preserved my manhood. Like it, it feel, it feel good. It feel real good. Like that's, um, that's what you call a, a life defining moment. Yeah, that's wild, man. So when you turned them down, what's they in their feelings? Like what's they trying to block you from? Bro, that's insane to think about, bro. Doing stuff like, yo, we're not going to allow him to do this or do this or, you know, we're not going to put him on this platform. He's not going to host this. Like. What happened, yo? I got you. You're asking me, is blackballing a real thing? Yeah. Yes, blackballing is a real thing. Some people in this industry definitely get mad enough at you uh, if you have bruised their ego or if you have um, uh, shown them that you don't need their approval to be successful, then they will definitely do what they can to try to blackball you. Yes. I don't doubt that people have attempted to blackball me, um, absolutely. But if you don't feed me, if you don't provide my blessings to me, then you can't starve me. You can't deny my blessings to me. And once I truly double down on knowing that like God holds all the keys to whatever's meant for D1, that's when I really started just moving with a level of boldness that's like, yeah, I'm standing on this, you heard me? And you might try to you might try to have a vendetta against me or whatever, whatever, whatever. But I guarantee I'm gonna exceed anything that you could have did for me. And then I'm gonna look down at you. And you're gonna be like, oh shoot, how you got up there? Cause that's the only one I submit to is up there. You hear me? They got I know they got people that's that's trying to blackball me right now. It any way, shape, or form that they feel like they could. I know, I absolutely know that, bro. I know it. And for a long time, it's been that way. It's been that way for over a decade. There was somebody, there was somebody in New Orleans who I knew for a fact, uh, who worked in the industry, who was trying to blackball me because I wouldn't sign a deal with them. You know, right when they saw that I was about to get signed to a major label, try to blackball me, talk down to me, told me, oh, you ain't gonna never get to this certain level because you trying to do things your own way. Like, man, I done been through all this stuff. And you know, you got to learn how to respond with love um, and not just love Jesus, but you got to learn how to love Judas as well. The people who don't rock with you, you know, you got to be like, hmm, that's how, that, that's how, that's how dope and mature I am. I'm going to still learn how to love you, but not allow you to, you know, be a, uh, be a person that's in my way. Well, that'll do it. That'll do. Ain't much to say about that. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what y'all think about that. Rap niggas, y'all gotta be careful out here, my boy. Y'all gotta be careful, boy. They coming for you. Diddy coming for you.